What's up, everybody? It's your boy Joshua Edwards, live from live from my very own sunroom. This is season three, episode forty-one of Joshua's Proximity. We are finally heading into week five of the NFL season. So obviously, I got to do a recap. I didn't do an episode last week, so I'm just going to touch on the end of week three and then the end of week four of the NFL regular season. Uh, but before I even do that, let me go ahead and give you my updated MVP list. But I've got to read the end of week three and obviously the end of week four MVP list. So my MVP list at the end of week three went like this. Lamar Jackson, number one. Jalen Hurts, number two. Number three, Josh Allen. And number four, Patrick Mahomes. At the end of this week, it literally flipped upside down. Number one is Patrick Mahomes. What he did against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers to go down in Tampa Bay, put up 41 points to... Go down there without a true, quote-unquote, number one receiver outside of Travis Kelsey doesn't get any better than that. Uh, number two, obviously, Josh Allen. You're down 20-3 in Baltimore going into arguably the, the one of the loudest, toughest stadiums to play in, especially in this time of the season, to come back down from 20-3 to and win the game, score 2017, oh, yes, to score 20 unanswered points in Baltimore is unheard of. Josh Allen, number two. Number three, Jalen Hurts. Now, they did look sloppy against the Jags. They ended up cleaning it up, and they're the only undefeated remaining team in the NFL. So, obviously, Jalen Hurts has to be number three. And Lamar Jackson, right now, his resume is second to none. Yes, he hasn't closed the game against the Buffalo Bills, but... It's still Lamar Jackson at the end of the day. So, since I'm talking about Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens, let's go ahead and just talk about them. This is why the Baltimore Ravens are reluctant on giving Lamar Jackson his money. He is a phenomenal talent. I pray that he stays healthy the entire football season because he is going to get his money at the end of the season. But this is my issue with Lamar Jackson. When you're up 20 to 3 against the Buffalo Bills, when you're up 28 to 7 against the Miami Dolphins, these are two teams that you know you are going to see in the postseason. This is two teams where you have to nail the the the, the coffin shut. You are at home on both of these occasions. You're up 17 last week and you're up 21 two weeks before. And you cannot close this game. This is an indictment on the offense. This is an indictment on Lamar Jackson. This is an indictment on the the Baltimore Ravens defense as a whole. When you go up 17 plus points, it doesn't matter if it's at the end of the game. It doesn't matter if it's third quarter, first half. You are expected to close these games out, especially when you are considered universally as a top five quarterback universally as a top three MVP front runner, you have to close these games shut. There is no if, there, there are no ifs, ands, or buts about it. When you look at the, the Ravens game, I watched this game from start to finish. Now, I have a great friend, I'm not going to speak on her, but he was going crazy during the Baltimore Ravens uh, when they were just beating up on the Buffalo Bills. And then, obviously, in the second half, there was no... There was no change. You scored 20 points in the first half, and you get shut out the last two quarters. Last 30 minutes of the football game, it's an indictment on the Baltimore Ravens. John Har- Harborough, whatever your name is, Jim Harborough, whatever your name is, I'm tired of hearing, ah, we should have we should have took the three points. Now, nah, I really like the decision to go for the win in that situation because you're going against Josh Allen. Field goals are not going to beat Patrick Mahomes. Field goals are not going to beat Josh Allen. Field goals are not going to beat Justin Herbert, Joe Burrow, or even Lamar Jackson. You have to score points in order to kill these young giants, man. And I understand where he was going in the decision-making. But at the end of the day, the offense, you got to give me something more than 20 points in the first half and get shut out in the second half. This is an indictment on the Baltimore Ravens as a whole. But let's just go ahead and let's change up topics. Since I'm talking about at least these teams were up 17-plus points, the Carolina Panthers are now 1-26 when they allow 
teams over 17 points during the Matt era, during the Matt Rule era. It is time for David Tepper to get off of Matt Rule. It has been time last year. It's been time since they signed him. Matt Rule is not the guy for the Carolina Panthers. You saw it with the first edition of his coaching career. He goes out and he gets Teddy Toilet Water as his starting quarterback in the National Football League. Yes, Teddy Bridgewater had a, a great outing when he was with the New Orleans Saints. But, bro, we are in Carolina. Matt Rule, Teddy Bridgewater is not the quarterback that you think he is. He's not going to be the quarterback for the Miami Dolphins when he comes in for Tua and he's next two to three to one, whatever, how many weeks he plays. He's not that guy. Matt Rule, your quarterback selection has been awful. Sam Darnold, awful. I'm going to say it right now. Baker Mayfield, awful. All three of these guys have been horrendous for the Panthers organization. Matt Rule has been horrendous for the Panthers organization. I saw something last week that I've never seen since I've been a fan of the Carolina Panthers. The seats were empty. My homeboy texted me and said, Joshua, the, Pan the Panther tickets for the Arizona Cardinal games are going dumb cheap. I said, how much? He's talking about $100 for floor seats. Matt Rule, David Tepper, you said that you would not tolerate mediocrity. This has been a clown show. Say it with me, clown show. I mean, the Carolina Panthers are abysmal. I cannot believe that we went out there and then we hired the guy from uh, the Giants. I can't think of his name right now. But this whole organization, throw it away right now. I mean, I had low expectations for my team. You know, I was trolling just a little bit, saying that at least we would win the NFC South. But, I mean, whoa, we are, we are really the worst team in the National Football League. We're worse than the ja uh, Jackson, not Jacksonville, than the Houston Texans. We're worse than the Oakland Raiders, Las Vegas Raiders, excuse me. We are the worst team in the National Football League, and it's by a mile. We are worse than the different Broncos. We flat out stink. This guy needs to be fired expeditiously. And I don't, I'm not the one to call for guys' jobs, but I just call it like I see it. If you're not good, if you're just not up for the position, then you do not deserve that position. Matt Rule does not deserve to be a head coach in the National Football League, and that's okay. He is more, his game is catered more towards the college realms. Now, granted, he does, he does have some great picks. Jeremy Chen is a great, solid pick. J.C. Horn is a great, solid pick. Derrick Brown, the receivers, all of that is fine and nandy dandy but the coaching is terrible. Coaching plays a huge role in the success of a team and the success of the organization, and Matt Rule is not the guy that we need. I'm going to change topic just a little bit. The AFC West, when I think of, when, when I was talking about early preseason predictions, man, the AFC West, they have four outstanding teams that we all believe could have at least made the playoffs. Right now, this, this division as a whole has been underperforming. Now, the Chargers do have a lot of injuries, but at the end of the day, they, they are competing with some bottom-tier teams. They're competing with the Houston Texans. They're competing and losing to the Jacksonville Jaguars. And that's no shot against the Jacksonville Jaguars, but, I mean, the AFC West as a whole is terrible. The Denver Broncos, another terrible coach, Nathaniel Hackett. Hackett, terrible. I'm, I apologize, Kansas City, for saying any of these other teams could give you a runner for your money because it's not close. It's no, it's, there is no competition who is the best team in the AFC West? It's the Kansas City Chiefs and it's by a mile. The NFC East. There is a lot of jadedness in the record when you look at the NFC East. The Commanders are awful. The New York Giants, they have a solid defense. But as an offense, outside of Saquon Barkley, they are terrible. The Cowboys, they really haven't played anybody, so I'm not too... 
I can't give them enough credit just yet. The only solid team I believe in the NFC East is the Philadelphia Eagles, and they're four and zero right now. The only undefeated team in the National Football League. But you know, the the question still is: Is Jalen Hurts the guy? And that has yet to be seen. Right now, he is a top three MVP candidate. Dougie, not Dougie Peterson, the head coach for Philadelphia Eagles is definitely um, leading the leading candidate for coach of the year. But the NFC East right now is, there's a lot of jadedness in that. Talking about the AFC West, let's trans, transition to the other side, the NFC West. When you look at this division as well, I don't know what it is with the two West divisions, AFC West and NFC West. A lot of underperforming. The L.A. Rams, we know what Matthew Stafford is. I don't care if he won a Super Bowl championship. This guy stinks. That offense stinks. Jimmy G, that offense is just run heavy, run heavy, run heavy. We don't know what he's going to be like. The Seattle Seahawks, what are they? Uh, The Arizona Cardinals stink. It's just a lot of stinkiness and the two AFC and and the two West Division, AFC and NFC. I knew that this one was going to be a short episode. Um, So let's go ahead and reveal my top 10. So as I talked about, I'm going to do a recap of two weeks ago at the end of week three and obviously the end of week four. So last week, my top 10 was Jags, 10, 9 Bucks, 8 Packers, 7 Rams, 6 Vikings, 5 the Chiefs, 4 the Ravens, 3 the Eagles, 2 Miami, and number 1 the Buffalo Bills. So now, dun dun dun, heading into week 5, Josh's proximity, top 10, let's jump right into it. At number 10, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. When you look at this team, they are still bad offensively. Mike Evans is the only reliable target right now for Tom Brady. Julio Jones, he's always on the injury list. Chris Godwin, if he catches the ball and he gets hit in the middle of the field, he's gimpy getting up. I'm scared if he's going to ever get back to 100%. So right now, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, their defense is great. Offense is is holding them back still. Number 10, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Number 9, the Cincinnati Bengals. They just beat the second-best team, I believe, in the National Football League. Yes, m- maybe things would have been differently if Tua played, but I don't believe so. Even when he was playing, that offense didn't look like they was capable of doing anything. So at number nine, the Cincinnati Bengals. Number eight, Green Bay. When you struggle against Bill Belichick, when he doesn't have his number one quarterback, when he has Brian Hoarder, how Hoyer at quarterback, and then they go in there and they put in a rookie seventh-round pick. I don't even know how I pronounce his name. The Green Bay Packers are terrible on the offensive side. Number eight, Green Bay Packers. Number seven, Miami. Miami is is still a good football team. Now, Teddy Bridgewater is going to put them in handcuffs. Teddy Bridgewater is going to lock them up. Teddy Bridgewater is not going to – Extend the field like Tua Tugavaloa, but Miami is still a very good football team. Number seven, the Miami Dolphins. Number six, the Baltimore Ravens. You're up 20 to three. You're up 28 to seven. You got to close these games out in order to be considered the elite of the elite. They still have a great quarterback, a once in a lifetime generational talent at the quarterback position, but you got to close these games, man. Defense can still be had. Offense in the second half of both of those games that you have given up has had a huge meltdown. So at number six, the Baltimore Ravens. Number five, the San Francisco 49ers. When you look at this team, they can do anything that you want. They play physical on the defensive front. They are physical on defense. They are physical on offense. Jimmy G, he just has to make the throws. They have to start getting George Kittle involved in the offense for fantasy purposes and also because he can stretch the defense a little more as well. Number five, the San Francisco 49ers. Number four, the Minnesota Vikings. They're three and one. They went up there. They smashed Green Bay early in the season. They went overseas and they beat up one of the New Orleans Saints. The Minnesota Vikings are a team to really keep an eye on, man. 
Dalvin Cook, obviously the whole shoulder situation, he always tends to get hurt once once he fumbles the football. I call cap on that. So number four, the Minnesota Vikings. Number three, the Kansas City Chiefs. The only reason why this team, I believe, is not the best team right now is because of their receiver position. I got to see a little more out of the receiver, the receiver room. Patrick Mahomes is going to be Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes is a once-in-a-lifetime generational talent. The Kansas City Chiefs are for real. Number three, the Kansas City Chiefs. Number two, the Eagles. Did not like what I saw against the, the Jacksonville Jaguars. They ended up winning the game. They are the only undefeated team on my top ten or in the National Football League, period. But my top ten, I don't go just based off a of record. I go off of what you look like from a week-to-week standpoint. Number two, the Philadelphia Eagles. Number one, the Buffalo Bills. It hasn't changed since week one. This team, they're missing pieces on defense. They locked up the Baltimore Ravens in the second half. The game only got out of hand because Josh Allen and and these other receivers could not catch the ball because of the weather conditioners. The Buffalo Bills are still by far the best. I'm not going to say by far is close. They're still the top team in the National Football League, top three. You could you could switch any of the three any way that you want to. They're still at least in the top three, man. So 10 the Bucks, 9 the Bengals, 8 the Packers, 7 Miami, 6 the Ravens, 5 49ers, 4 the Vikings, 3 the Chiefs, 2 the Eagles, number 1 the Buffalo Bills. Let me go ahead and give my matchups for this week. The Colts versus Broncos Thursday night football. The Colts are awful. Matt Ryan is going to struggle. Give me the Broncos. Giants versus Packers in London. Oh, man. I'm going with, uh, I don't know who's going to be at quarterback, so I'm going to go with the Packers. I'm not going to be a fan in this matchup. Lions versus Patriots. Bill Belichick, you know what he does. The Lions have no defense. Give me the Patriots in this matchup. Chargers versus Browns. Can be a very, very, very good game. Um, Jacoby Brissett is the quarterback going to the Chargers. Texans versus Jags. Give me the Jags. Falcons versus the Buccaneers in Tampa Bay. Um, I like the Buccaneers. Steelers versus the Bills. Bills, give me this one. Jets versus the Dolphins. It could be closer than a lot of people think. I'm going to go the upset here with the Jets. Bears versus the Vikings. Give me the Vikings, obviously. Titans versus the Commanders. The Commanders are awful. Titans. Seahawks versus the Saints in New Orleans. Uh, I don't know if Michael Thomas is playing or not. Even with that, I'm still going to Saints. 49ers versus Panthers. This is the week I hope Matt Matt Rule gets fired. Uh, 49ers. Eagles versus the Cardinals in Arizona. Ooh. Mm, mm -mm Mm-mm-mm. Give me the I'm, – I'm sticking with the Eagles in this matchup. Cowboys versus the Rams in L.A. If the Cowboys win, they will crack my top eight on, on in my top ten. With that being said, I'm going, uh, I'm going – I'm going with the Cowboys in this matchup. Bengals versus Ravens, Sunday night football in Baltimore. You know how I'm rocking. Joey B, let's go, Bengals. And last but not least, Monday Night Football, Raiders versus Chiefs in Kansas City. Mm. Give me the Chiefs, man. What I saw, this team is next level, man. And that is how we do it out here on episode 41 of Josh's Proximity. I'm out, man. I'll catch you guys next week.